good hold from Yonda Palm Sheet, but a good result for Magnus. He leads in the match. He burnt a bunch of the clock off the match timer, but a, a nice start, I think, for all the fans in game one of the three plus one. And by the way, if you're new to this uh, channel right now, throw a sub in. It's September. But also, keep following the Speed Chess Championship presented by Coinbase because this is another quarterfinal match. And after this one ends, we do have MVL versus Nihal Saren. So you will not want to miss all of the action here. But back to this board, Benjamin. We see that we had an Alapin Sicilian Magnus going back to one of my childhood favorite openings. Yeah, we see Magnus here with the pawns in the middle. He has active development, maybe the Rook can move to D1. He's spending a little bit of time though, Jan's still playing quickly. There we have to move for Rook D1. So let's see now how Jan is going to play, like maybe Bishop D7, but it all looks a little bit clumsy. So I think Magnus can be quite satisfied about the outcome of the opening here. We see him move Bishop to D7. What White can often do here is combine moves like Bishop to D3 and Queen E4 to try to start some sort of attack on the King side. And he goes knight c3, so we are going to see a transformation of pawn structure. But I like what you're pointing out, that the bishop on d3 will stare at the black king. And if you play g6 to blunt that bishop, you give up the h6 square for the second white bishop. This is starting to look like the makings of an attack. But Benjamin, we know if there is no attack, black is better because of the c3 and a2 isolated pawns. Exactly. All of these pawns can be a little bit weak. The pawn on a2, the pawn on c3, also the pawn on e5. Nice move here by Magnus going h4, because eventually you want to go keep queen e4. Black has to go g6, and then you can follow up quickly with the move h5. So he can also play h5 here right away, anticipating that move g6. And look at the clocks. Magnus, he's down nearly 40 seconds. Jan is playing this quickly. Those were, wow, Robert, this looks like a serious mistake. I'm wondering why he went for this, like what he was worried about on the H file. Maybe he thought that White would quickly get some pieces over there, and he's trying to bring his Rook towards the Black King. But this Bishop on F7 is a big pawn. Yeah, Rook A5, this looks very awkward from Jan. Bishop to B3. Now Magnus will always have pressure on the pawn on E6. He can maybe move a Knight to G5 at some point. This looks terrible for Black. Really terrible. And... The c3 pawn is now targeted, it is a weakness, but I think that white can go with a rook lift, rook e3, both defending the c3 pawn, and when you move your knight out the way, I feel like the rook would have been able to jump towards the king side, because rook d1, and it got a question mark, still looks good for white though. Right, so what happens if Jan takes on the one? How are you going to recapture? You can take with the rook, but then you hang the pawn on e5. You can also take with the bishop, but you would like to keep that bishop in an active position, but what is this move a5 by Jan? I don't... I don't see the point because a4 is not even a threat. Right, so this question should be asked again. Rook takes d1, rook takes d1, knight takes e5. Perhaps Magnus would just take back and plant a rook on d7 at the end of the line and say that he's got good control, but that doesn't look very simple. I think that black would have chances there, but Benjamin, the bar is all the way up in Magnus's favor. Yeah, this looks great for Magnus. And takes, in case the rook takes d1, you can also take with the bishop, take with the rook. 
Jan goes Bishop to F8, but this will always leave him with very weak dark squares. Magnus trades on D8. And I mean, maybe like Knight G5 now? Oh, that's a crusher. Because now F7 is hanging directly. You can't take this bishop that looks free on H6 because queen takes F7. Queen takes H7 is a direct checkmate. And if you play a move like queen E7 to save your bishop, bishop takes F8. That's going to hurt. Oh, goodness. You just have no space for your pieces and E6 is loose. Robert, I think this one is just over. If you go queen E7, Magnus just takes. And if the queen takes, bishop takes E6. You cannot take it. So there's queen F8 and knight E6. And here, same thing. Bishop F7, knight E6, and the game is over. It's completely done. An extra exchange for Magnus. Uh, he looks bored with this one, and Jan has had enough. Magnus wins. He is now up by three points.